Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, found it just as he told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them and said, take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks and gave it to them. They all drank from it. And he said, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Flannery O'Connor was one of the most important American authors of the 20th century. She was born in Georgia in a time where women were seen but not heard in the Deep South, much less read. She was a Roman Catholic in a time in the Deep South where Catholics were neither seen nor heard. I want to read this short account from one of her letters. She writes, I was once, five or six years ago, taken by some friends to have dinner with Mary McCarthy and her husband, Mr. Broadwater. She just wrote that book, A Charm Life. She departed the church at the age of 15 and is a big intellectual. We went at eight and at one, I hadn't opened my mouth once, there being nothing for me to say in such company. Having me there was like having a dog present who'd been trained to say a few words, but overcome with inadequacy had forgotten to say them. Well, toward morning, the conversation turned on the Eucharist, which I, being the Catholic, was obviously supposed to defend. Mrs. Broadwater said that when she was a child and received the host, she thought of it as the Holy Ghost, he being the most portable of the Trinity. Now she thought of it as a symbol and implied that it was a pretty good one. I then said in a very shaky voice, well, if it's a symbol, the hell with it. Well, that was all the defense I was capable of, but I realize now that is all I will ever be able to say about it outside of a story, except that it is the center of existence for me all the rest of life is expendable. Well, if it's a symbol, the hell with it. Miss O'Connor would not approve of such language in church. Probably Bishop Hurley doesn't either. <laughs> but her remark illustrates that deep Roman Catholic belief in the real presence of Jesus in the bread and wine we know as the body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi, the feast we celebrate today. Now, God is, of course, everywhere. We can't go anywhere but what he is not there with us. And God speaks to us in many different varied ways. But we believe 
as we have always believed, that the risen Lord Jesus is especially present, really present, in the sacrament of his body and blood. What is bread and wine is the real presence of God reaching through heaven, through the cross of Jesus, penetrating our doubt and our sin, drawing us up into union, communion with God. We believe that God can be present on earth because Jesus was present on earth. We believe Jesus is present in this bread and wine because he said so. This is my body, my blood for you. Like Flannery O'Connor said, it is the center of our Catholic existence. So no matter how many doubts we have about this or that aspect of the faith, whether the music is any good or not, whether the priest always speaks too long or takes up too many collections, whether we are so mad at the church we could spit or we can't stand the people in the pew in back of us, we nevertheless come to communion to receive the body and blood of Christ, truly present, really present for us in love. We live in a world where everything is relative. Promises made to be broken. Contracts are commitments we keep when convenient. Love lasts only so long as we feel it. No wonder people look at the Catholic belief in Christ really present in the Eucharist as a quaint, naive idea, a holdover from a magical time of thinking which is to say religious thinking. Perhaps because we live in such times, we need to celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi more than ever before. More than ever, we need to proclaim God is really present for us in a love that never dies. And we do not have to die to experience it. All we need do is come to communion where the risen Lord is always waiting for us. When the Feast of Corpus Christi was celebrated in the Middle Ages, at the conclusion of the Mass, the Blessed Sacrament was carried out into the village, to the marketplace, the business districts, the neighborhoods, where people lived and loved and sinned. And the purpose of that procession was this. Christ may be present in the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle of the church, but he is not confined there. Those who receive him must carry him out into their lives.